I'm in the mood. I hope you are for two days <laughs> I'm, I'm here with some of the friends. One of them is around town or around the country visiting his family, but Kathleen the original lady is right here with us. And Gary, the man about town. And as I told you, Jerome Roberts, he's away visiting family. So hi, Gary. Hi, friends. How's hey. it going? Okay, now, at the time that we're talking about this, we're taking a, a, a an advanced guess as how things are going to look in July. And the man about town could be able to give us some little insight. Go for it, Gary. Well, yeah, really, um, we're looking at a summer coming with uh, mass, or we're looking at a summer coming with people that have gotten injected. We're looking at restaurants that are opening up. We're looking at going back to what they call normal, but it ain't going to be normal. Uh, but really, the most important thing is like finance for most people. Now, most people got to 1400 but what are they going to do when they spend up to 1400 during the summer months? As you know, summer gets real hot and people get real kind of, you know, active. <laughs> so well, I, hope for one thing, Gary, I hope for one thing that the, the pools will be open for the young people, that they yeah. will be fully open this summer for the, for the young people. Yeah. Well, that doesn't stop what's going on on the violence level, they need jobs. Um, they, you know, they, it's really kind of complicated to know what's inside a youth's head, so to speak today, because they're mostly on Facebook and Instagram and doing kind of things that, that are causing them to get angered by something that someone says. So, I think they need some kind of outlets. And I think the only thing that I could think of is an outlet is a job or a library or something that they could do by camping. You know, there's different things out there that we need to steer these youth to. That's my, my I'm just saying. Kathy Lee, you have a, you belong to several groups and I'm sure they've been talking about things that they want to do or want to have happening as we go forward. Okay, I'll start with uh, West Park uh, Cultural Center. It's an arts and education program. And last year we were not able to hold our Arts Fest uh, um, event, which is an event that's open to the public for free. And mm. at the taping of this, it's normally the second weekend in June. I'm not sure if that even went down. So if this is July, we're still debating on that. But it has grown oh, so tremendously over the years. And I do historical trolley tours of the Centennial District. Uh, the Germantown Historical Society, I can tell you, they are, um, if I may speak as a board member, that uh, they, the people should really take advantage of the, um, I think we have about uh, 17 or 18 uh, sites in Germantown, because Germantown has a lot of history. Philadelphia has a lot of history. But uh, coming up on with the Johnson House, the William Still 200th anniversary and the Lest We Forget Museum, and you have the Black Writers Museum, you have the Aces Museum, and you have um, the Chew House, you know, which was basically a, a plantation from my understanding. But um, it's, there's a whole lot going on this summer that hopefully you can check out. And well, even don't forget the park service down in Center City. I don't know if I have a beef about it, but I thought a lot about I don't like changing the time. Now, I know we have daylight saving time, and that gives us more light, but I don't like to go back to the darkness and getting up in the dark, going to work in the dark, coming home in the dark, everything's in the dark when you go back on the time. I'm for keeping the time straight, and a lot of countries, you know, are not joining us in that anymore. How do you all feel about it? I'm just saying, keep the time the same. Uh, Gary, what do you think? I'm going to pass that on to you. I like it the way it is now, but the thing yeah, is. Now like, it's daylight saving, though. And this I, could stay. Yeah, but, I, but, but it's darker later. You know, so you get more sunlight. You yeah, know? Well, that's why yeah. they do it. Yeah, so that's, a, that's an advantage for 
melanated people. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're just saying, right? I'm just saying. We need, uh, we've been we've been locked in so long. We need as much sun as we can get. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think there's one state in the United States where they don't honor daylight savings time. And I never understood daylight savings time, to be honest with you. I mean, I understand why they do it. It's just annoying that they do it. And uh, it's just, if the rest of the world is, why are we doing it? But maybe part of the infrastructure uh, bill that will have passed the, uh, the Congress and the Senate will maybe be able to um, address a lot of these little infrastructure problems that we might have across this country. Now I lost, I got confused on my own brilliance there. You see that? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Gary. I'm <laughs> no, I got confused. Just, just think about it, Miss Trudy. At seven o'clock, it's still light outside. You could go outside and That's see wonderful. the sun. That's wonderful. Of course, it, it's not quite like that. When and the it, won't, you know, it, it won't right. be like five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, but in the winter, with this other time, you know, going back and it's too dark. It's dark when you get up. It's dark when you come home. It's dark all the time. And now, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Trudy, but wait a minute now. <laughs> if we roll back an hour, now I'm, try now I'm trying to logically think this out. If okay. we keep it the same time, let's say now. I don't yeah. know when, get, when, when will it get dark when I go outside? And when is it light when I wake up? Now I've really gone off the deep end because <laughs> now I'm trying to figure out what is the difference? Well, it was just my opinion. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just saying, saying all I know is that it'll be lighter at 7 30, 8 o'clock. Oh, so you do know <laughs> so, that. Okay, so, for the senior, so for the seniors that want to be out in the street shopping, they don't have to worry about getting home at a certain time before, before it gets dark. Right, they oh, feel safe. Okay. They feel okay. very safe now being out a little later because it's light. I heard a lady one day. We, it was it was dark in the winter, and then she's you know when the summer came and she was out the same person. Yeah. She said, I'm so glad that I, I want to get home before it gets dark. I said it don't get dark till seven thirty. She said, "Oh, thank you, Jesus." That's what she said. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's I the advantage. Know. That's it. That's the real advantage. So why don't they just leave it like it is now? No, I no, I have I have no problem with that. I guess I've just been so used to daylight saving time that. Yeah. You know, you just get so used to it, you don't see what I'm, I'm seeing, what oh, you're saying right. now. You're used to it. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, here comes, don't forget to turn your clocks back. Yeah, well, <laughs> that part is just preliminary because we have to do it because they, they consider that moving into I, don't, I really don't get it. But if they <laughs> left it, I would wish they would leave it like it is now. Because now when we finish, I'm just saying our conversation and our taping, people can watch it. And then they got some time to go outside too and get some sun. Well, we'll take a break right here. And when we come back, Gary, you should have some jobs that you can mention that these kids can get during the summertime and during the warmer and lighter days. Oh yeah. You like that. Oh yeah. back and we have some ideas or we should have some ideas of what we should be doing during this sort of relaxed time because you know in the summer everybody's sort of relaxing most people do they go on vacation they take time off but it's also a time that we can think about what's coming and Gary I think you were saying that nothing's going to be sort of normal anymore so this is a good time for us to maybe talk together and plan together but some things that are going to start back up and some things which will be different. Got any ideas, Dan? Yeah, well, there's a lot of outdoorsy things that parents really, if they wanted to take their kids outdoorsies to different events and summer camps, I've seen quite a few that are advertising right now, being that I'm in the marketing 
field. And there's so much stuff going on outdoorsy. I mean, even the jazz concerts down, down at Cherry Pier have started happening. I mean, you know, they got the skating ring, uh, uh, roller skating rings down at the, uh, the, the seaport, you know. But the parents got to be willing to invest the time into the youth and take more time with them since the summer is coming and also the fall is coming where they anticipate going back to school. That the jury's still out on. So uh, for now, the kids need to be entertained. And the parents need to entertain the children or even show them how to get entertained in a, in a nice way. That's my, uh, I'm just saying. Kathy? Well, as a retired educator, I am very interested in um, our city being able to um, fully reopen all of the schools on time because it is, it is absolutely critical that our children get back into uh, the classrooms but they have to be safe. The teachers have to be safe in order for instruction to take place, in order for the parents to be able to go back to work. If there's a whole lot riding on that, but I think the um, infrastructure bill that um, they're really pushing to get through, it's about time because I see it really being able to um, overhaul a lot of the problems that were identified during the pandemic as far as a fan is not ventilation in the school. Philadelphia, I mean, they're, they're ancient, they're very old, and there are a lot of modern things that need to um, innovate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they have to be adapted, but it's not just in the schools, it's across all the workplaces, all the, all the places where we gather in public. So uh, this fall, you know, I'm really hoping that, um, look at all the jobs it's gonna create, Gary, with people yeah. actually rebuilding the city rebuilding the neighborhoods and, and making them more, more vital and safe for everyone. And when the kids have the jobs that you're talking about, you know, we just have to make sure that our people in this city are the ones that have the jobs. And that is why they need to be um, really, I wanna say, they really just need to make sure that there's a lot of equity across who is rebuilding what. Because mm -hmm. we cannot get closed out of all of the jobs that are coming down the pike with this whole infrastructure thing. You know, there is one job when you said uh, noticing and, and making sure that you're aware of what's going on. Uh, one of the airlines has already started a school to train hundreds, hundreds, I said, young people in all the ethnic groups. They're going to take more women. They're going to train more ethnics um, of color, uh, Asians, every every nationality that we now have in this country. And they're going to train them based on a young girl who at the age of six, and I saw this on television some time ago, at the age of six, she always wanted to be a pilot, but of course they weren't taking pilots of color. But now she is one of the students in that school to become a pilot and she's having a ball. She's being trained and, and that's something that I hope our young people will start looking at, different avenues of employment, not just being a doctor, but a research doctor or, or a dentist or some of the specialties that are on being in medicine and still recognize your goals. Those kind of things I hope they're looking at during this time off. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, Gary. Well, well, you know, <laughs> it, it, it all falls back on the parent that cares about the child that they have in their households that can sh look for information for them to do. Because if they don't have anything to do, it won't be a pretty summer for a lot of these young people out here because already, you know, it's it's kind of tragic some of the things that are happening because of the fact that they don't have anything to do and they not being able to go to school. So in the fall, they have to whip something up. And that infrastructure thing is very good because that's going to create jobs, definitely going to create jobs. Now, how is the infrastructure money broken down? Is it roads? Is it bridges? Is it tunnels? Is it this uh, the uh, state station in Kingsington where they completed it a couple of days and it, it, it was so amazing how they opened that station right back up real quick 
And I was like, wow, that was only like a week. And they, they could do it in a week. They did it in a week. And it's like they wanted it open because financial. So they know what to do. It's just that where is the money going for these different things? Now, is it going to go to help improve the school uh, infrastructure? Or is it going to go to help the street outside of the school? <laughs> you know, because we don't even know. And that's a that's a thing that we should um, find out about. Uh, just saying uh, for mm -hmm. the public and the public should also look into it. Not just leave it on us. I'm just saying. I bet there's one thing that should be if it's not thought about, and that is summer school. Now, I know going to school is an ugly word sometimes when you're on a vacation or a vacation time, but summer school would be one of the ways they could make up what they lost during the uh, epidemic earlier and when they had to close school and have them close. So summer school would be an easy way to catch up, wouldn't it, Kathy? Oh, I agree. I totally agree. Uh, the challenge, though, is, again, it deals with it's OK if you're in a school that is air conditioned, like Microsoft School of the Future. It's not OK if you are in an old building that does not have air conditioning. But I think these kids have learned a valuable lesson that school isn't because you only miss what you don't have anymore. And I'm pretty sure, actually, I'm hoping that they have um, actually, well, yeah, created a, lot, yeah, just created a new uh, attitude towards school because well, they were deprived of it. So now you know you can take advantage of it, and that brings Gary's point in. The parents have to let the children know, like you missed the whole year of school, and what are you going to do about it? And how can I support you as your parent? In other words, to appreciate the education. So maybe the instead of having, I have 33 report cards and four parents come, and I understand they have their jobs, maybe 33 parents will show up and, and check on their child's education. Maybe they will form PTAs because the most successful schools have the strongest PTAs. And you know, there's the parents now, that's who's doing it. So I'm just saying. Hmm. And there's other things that they can do to learn also while being outside, taking nature walks, going to museums that are open and permissible, and to um, all the outdoor things that you, where you can learn, nature walks and things like that. We used to do that in school. I don't know about the kids today. Well, they're not being empowered to do certain things. I'm just saying, see, that's where, you know, really, it's interesting to be on this topic about who can empower. You go and talk to another kid's child today and the parent look at you. If the parent's with you, <laughs> you might you might have a fight. So the thing is, is that the parents, um, in some cases, too, when I was in the school, too, the, te the parents who wanted to beat the teacher in some oh, instances. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now, okay, uh, yeah. let, me, let, let, me just, let me just say this. In all of my years as teach teaching, I did make a couple of mistakes. I did, you have to admit mistakes. So you have to assess your teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think that I became a better teacher by constantly assessing and reassessing how I was interacting with other people's children. But I can mm -hmm. say this. When I learned that parents want to be respected, and I'm not saying I respect the parent, but at times we do sometimes disrespect the students in front of us. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot discipline with dignity, then you do create problems. Mm -hmm. But a parent I've noticed, when I was able to, most of my parents come in, my teammate, Connie D'Alessandro and I, and I'm shout out to Connie because she just retired, we had a lot of parents coming in, and I can't say the other teachers did not. Don't 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 get it twisted. But, but Kathy, you Kathy, had a lot. You were, Kathy, you were an engaging teacher. That's how I really got to know you, and and I thought you were excellent because of the way the children or the students, I shouldn't say children, the students uh, responded to you. You created all kinds of activities and different things for them to do and to think about. So I applaud you for being a I very also, good teacher. We'll but truly, right back. Oh, I had parents with me. <laughs> we'll be right back with more and closing. <laughs> 
All right. Cut. All right. We're at 19 minutes and 20. We're at 19 minutes and 20 seconds. Well, how much more do we have to go? Yeah. You got, um, Jeez. You, you have eight more minutes left. Oh, okay. That was a oh, good okay. one. That was a yeah. good one. That was a good interaction. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about them those shower caps on your hats. <laughs> oh, I was, gonna, I, was gonna make, I was gonna make a mention of his hat that he has on now. Yeah, let's oh, let's talk that. about his hat. Yeah, let's talk about your hat and what crown, crown, crowns. Well, now don't forget it's, we're in the summer. It's waxed. It's tie dyed wax. It's, uh, they they have it and about? they put it in a certain thing and they wax. They dip it in this certain thing and. It, it it comes out like it is. It's tie dye, and then they wax. No, Joe, you don't do it when we talk it's about a process, it. It's a it's a process in Africa that they use. Larry, we're coming back to your hat. You can do it on it. Hmm? Who? We're coming back. Go ahead. Do uh, all right. Uh, let, let me, are y'all ready? All right, Tony J. I'm gonna text you. Let you know when we're at five, so you can do the drop. All right, y'all ready? We're back. You know, we've been talking about things to do for the summer and getting ready for the fall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's one thing we haven't touched on, and that's Gary's hat. Now, I remember we did a show once back in the days about hats, and he had a lot of them behind him. But today, he is wearing one of them. What is it all about, Gary? Well, it's, 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 it's called fatigue. It's a certain process that they use where they dip it in uh, in uh, dyes and so forth, and whatever comes out, it comes out. <laughs> it's oh, amazing. It, it's it's, 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 it's kind of a like a, a kind of a like a wax feeling on, onto a cloth. But this is something that is done. You know, it's interesting. We talk about what the kids can do. The crafts. Imagine if we could get some craft places going to teach kids to make things. And they would that would occupy them for the summer months, and um, they could also great. make money. They could instead of selling lemonade, they could make hats and make this and make that. That you know ceramics, you know a lot of stuff that they can do that they can keep themselves occupied by even making money. That might be something that the city could come up with an idea like that. Well, I mean, you have you have the idea. Why don't you promote it? And well, that, I, yeah, well, I, have, no. I have the idea, but I don't have the finesse to do it. So you got have, have to have to get, you have to get the people that know how to do this particular type of thing. There's people that do it, just like people that do the murals on the walls. They got they got. I've seen so many artistic things happen here in Philadelphia. They got you know they could put more money behind the arts and then and then offer the children more courses to take and those particular things I'm, they would have fun and they'll have fun doing it and they become children again you know and that brings me back to the board that i'm the president of the west park cultural center because mm -hmm. we are and we do have online classes gary as a matter of fact we have online guitar classes we have coding classes uh, it's called dance logic where our young people are learning uh coding uh computers by actually dancing, it's just just fa fabulous. Comcast does support that. We have our Camp Ginkgo. We have ceramics. We have those things, Gary. And our viewers out there need to know that they can go on to WPP, WPCC. Um, I think it's .org. Oh, my gosh. I should know that. I've had a brain freeze. Brain freeze. But, yes, <laughs> Arca <laughs> Cultural Center. Dot org. That's what it is. But you will find a lot of free things for parents to do and a lot of art activities, what we do. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because they also have fun savers. You know, there's a thing called fun savers where you get like a discount for doing different things around the city of Philadelphia. Or you could even call that that 311 number. I mean, that's so easy to call. 311, hey, I want to know where I can take my child today. You know, uh, it's safe in a safe environment. Or oh, I want to, you know, use the number. It's there. I mean, I call and it take you like a couple of seconds to get on, to get get on to somebody. I got on quicker than that than paying my life insurance or whatever. Really? You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
311 is amazing. It, it tells you everything about the city. I've never, I never seen something so quick. You know, I asked for a street light to be put because it was dark at a particular corner. And I called them one day and two days later, they put it, they fixed it. I was amazed. And that well, was calling 311. Uh, we haven't learned our city yet, have we? This is a no. good time because you can walk around and you don't have to worry about the weather too much. So good luck. I think there are many, many things that we can indulge ourselves and just make it, make it work for us, make it work for everyone around us. And I'm so glad that we're going to be wrapping up the show because it's time. <laughs> yeah. Kathy, any last yes. words? Yes, I just want to say it's westparkcultural.org. That's our website. And we offer stop motion clay projects, Camp Ginkgo, ceramics. I'm reading it now. Theater class at Fairmount Park, after school music programs, and visual literacy workshops, and of course, dance logic. So we offer all of that to the community. Okay, Gary. Yeah, Some you know, I, I, I was I was I was watching well it was a newsletter and it was in this community called Cedar Park. And they had so much information in this little newsletter that they send me every week or so often and it, it gives a wealth of information. These local um papers, you know, people that put out these yeah. community papers. Oh yeah, they're very informative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, right. we don't we don't we don't brag about our own. We don't put our own up enough. Right, right. And that's that's something that we can do and then there's something that people can do themselves too. Like the 311 is so easy. That is such an easy thing. 311, that's it, done. I've I've gotten so much help from different things associated with that number alone. I didn't even, you know, I didn't know the, until I called. And then they tell you, they give you a menu of all the different things that departments, the the the, um, the uh, municipal building where you can find this, taxes, this, that. I was like, wow. You ever, call that, you ever call that number and listen? <laughs> Try it. Okay. I think the most important thing is that we're trying to remind you that your time doesn't go to waste that there are many avenues that you can use to improve your mind or to just become aware of things that are going on around you that you didn't know about before. And they're free. So be sure that you take heed, make it work for you, make the time be yours and make it useful to you. And I'm here to encourage you and to say, please write us, send us your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you right here on I'm Just That. Have a blessed day.